Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing another walkthrough video here, and this is going to be a reassembly video on this uh, Ted Williams Model 560 a high speed uh, casting reel, actually made for uh, Sears, uh, but it's uh, actually made by Daiwa. Uh, believe it or not, and I talked a little bit about this in the uh, disassembly video that I have on this and also a comparison video, but this is actually a, a Daiwa made reel uh, that was made for Sears, okay? But this is going to be the reassembly of uh, of this model, okay? And so assuming that you've done all your cleaning, uh, you know, I've already serviced this reel, so most of the cleaning is pretty much done, uh, but we're going to go through all these reassembly points and the lube points and things like that so that uh, you can see, uh, w you know, what's involved in that. All right. But once you've cleaned up everything, we're going to go back uh, and uh, we're going to uh, put everything back uh, the way that it should go. So we're going to start with the drag stack. Okay. And we're going to put our hard uh, spacer washer back in. All right. Clean up those teeth really well on that main gear. All right, and then we're going to put some fresh grease on that when we're ready, of course. All right, now we've got a series of washers here that uh, that need to go back in place here. So uh, this is actually a replacement washer for one of the leather washers that broke uh, uh, taking this, this reel apart originally. Uh, but this is actually an HT100 uh, fiber washer that uh, you would use in like a Penn Beachmaster 155 perhaps, or a monofill, I believe, uh, 25, 26, or 27, I believe. Uh, but that's a good uh, substitute uh, for these leather drag stack washers that go in this reel. Okay, so you want to make sure all these, these washers are clean. Okay, got a leather washer. It's going to go back on. Keyed washer goes back into position. Leather. And the final metal washer, and then we've got a spacer, a little brass style spacer washer. Okay. Now there's a couple of little tips and tricks here. One thing that we want to do is we want to put a little bead of oil here on this knob which our dog is going to rest on, okay, so that makes for good lubing on, on that shaft, okay, but we also want to make sure uh, that we've, uh, we've cleaned off our main shaft with a little bit of 4-0 steel wool, okay, once again, I've already done this, but it's just to, for demonstration purposes, basically, all right, and I actually like to use uh, oil um, on this uh, shaft at times, but being that, uh, Things are so uh, open and loose in here. It's not quite uh, locked together the way that a, a pen uh, reel is. You know, you, you, you can, you know, be the judge. If you want to use oil, you can use oil. If you want to use grease, that's fine too. Just do a light, light film of oil on this shaft and that's it. Okay. Now, we have to make sure before we put these pieces on here and do some inspection in here, okay? And it's hard to see here, but there's a pinion gear that rests in there. I mentioned in the last video, you don't need to take this assembly apart. You just need to clean it up really good with a toothbrush and some WD-40 penetrating fluid, okay? And you're good to go. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take a little bit of blue grease to that pinion gear, okay? Which it already has some in there. It doesn't need more. Uh, than just a, a little dab, basically, okay? And then what you can also do, uh, you know, if these if these uh, pieces and parts are a little on the dry side, you can, you can hit them with a little bit of oil. I actually recommend just doing a little bit of grease, uh, you know, in these crevices here, basically. And then that way it's not going to spill all over your drag stack. That's one reason why I don't, really like using oil in those situations, you know, but if you just do a light, light greasing here, that should do just fine. Okay, have something like that. Because you don't want all that oozing down into your drag stack, okay? 
And speaking of drag stack and your main gear, so we've got these pieces ready here. Now the dog, mind you, it has to rest properly in in these teeth. Okay, so this is kind of where it gets a little tricky at times. So you just want to slide this into position here. Like so. And then you need to get this to mesh up with your pinion gear accordingly. Like so. Okay, should look something like that. Okay. And then we're going to take some more blue grease to that main gear. Just a light, light film of blue grease. Don't get it on the drag stack, okay? Just need enough of it there just to do the job. Okay. Should be all you need to do for that. Okay. Now we've already uh, done an inspection on our ball bearing. I talked a little bit about that in the disassembly video. Uh, these are not serviceable ball bearings, but you can pop them out uh, and you can clean them and then hose them down with some penetrating fluid. Okay. And I just like to just do a little drop of, of some real oil on that bearing and call it a day. There's really not much more you can do uh, with it. Okay, and we're going to put this back into position. We've got two screws in those positions there that are going to hold this housing in place. Yeah, you can see it says uh, on the side of the housing down here, it says Sears Roebuck and Company. And I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the thinking was behind a company like Daiwa making these trade reels for Sears was um, I think the drag stacks in these are not quite as good uh, as, as they would be in an uh, actual Daiwa model. I think that's, that's one, one thing, and maybe the bearings aren't quite as nice perhaps or something. Or sometimes uh, these trade reels have bushings and opposed to bearings. This particular one happens to have ball bearings, though. But just slight little variances, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it could be something like with the handle, you know, the handle's not quite as nice or things like that. Something to keep the cost down, basically. You know, or maybe they use some cheaper metals on a couple of other pieces and parts, or you know, what have you. Okay. So now that we have all this back into position here, okay, uh, there's a couple of pieces and parts here that we can throw back in here right away, actually. We'll just throw those in there. We're not going to do the handle piece yet, but we'll keep that, like, like it is basically okay so now there goes our bearing okay so we've already inspected our bearing okay we're going to put that back and we've got a cap here that needs to go back on and in position and it's got a little a little spacer in here actually I'll take that spacer out that into position like so okay a little drop of real oil here okay you've cleaned off these teeth with a toothbrush already okay and you want to get any sand grit or dirt things of that sort out of there and you know you don't have to hit this with a bunch of real grease you could do a little bit on here but these are plastic teeth and they don't really require uh, a lot of uh, a lot of grease per se okay so now we've got the parts here that make up our level line part of the reel essentially 
and we need to make sure that all these these pieces and parts go back uh, properly. All right. One thing I do recommend is make sure that this slot here, that the the top of the level wind arm uh, rests in. Make sure that that's all cleaned out. Okay, free of dirt, debris, and things of that sort. Okay, we've inspected our pole as well. Okay, and we've cleaned it up the best that we can. Okay, you can see the teeth are a little worn down, all right, but it's still usable. Okay. And we're going to put this back into position here. And this can be a little on the tricky side. I just recommend exercising some patience. basically have to get this to rest just right okay now you've got your worm uh, gear again toothbrush penetrating fluid clean it up really well clean this gear off really well this is a metal gear here on the end okay and we just want to make sure that that's all cleaned up in its entirety This is where it gets a little difficult sometimes to hold the pieces together. Okay, hold that together like that. Okay, and then we need to get our pawl back into position. Okay, so this is what this should look like. Okay, you should have that, that arm resting in that slot, in that groove. Okay, and then we're going to insert our pawl back into position. We're also going to tail it with a little bit of real oil, just a little drop, just to kind of help it sink back into position here. Actually, I've got to flip this like so, so it's on the right side. Okay, like that. Okay, and then we're going to put this cap back into position here. Take a little screwdriver. As far as replacement parts are concerned for this kind of reel, I wouldn't say that there's much out there. You'd have to go, you know, on eBay and you'd have to find a, like a parts reel. Uh, outside of the drag washers, those are replaceable or, you know, substitutable, so to speak. There are alternatives for that. But outside of that, I'd say most of these pieces and parts, probably a little difficult. You could probably get other model Daiwa reels to find, you know, replacement parts for these, but, you know, some of them may vary depending on what makes and models you're, you're looking at and dealing with. Okay, so that's in position like that. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit of real oil here. Okay, and then we've got this, this lock right here. We're going to put that into position. Okay, keeps that all together like so. Just going to take a little bit of blue grease here to the teeth on that metal gear. Okay. And we're going to put this back into position, like so. I like to do that little bead of oil right there and there.
screws are really difficult to get a hold of sometimes. Okay, we're just going to gently snug these up. Okay. Now, we've cleaned off our uh, spool uh, shaft here, supposedly, already with some penetrating fluid. And also the shaft on this side of taking some 4 steel wool, make this a really nice clean surface, okay? And then at that point, you can take some, some grease, some real grease, to both ends here. This gear is attached to, to the spool here. To that part of the shaft. And we're just going to put that back in like so. Let that line up. And then we're going to put our handle side back into position here. Just slide it back on like that. Nice thumb screw design. Makes for easy take apart and cleaning, which is nice. I also believe the thinking behind that was also so you could change out your drag stack real easily when you needed to. It's a nice feature. So, okay, so now we've got our star wheel. It's got to go back in position. Sometimes this can be a little difficult to get started. Sometimes it requires the help of a screwdriver kind of keeping this in position here. If you have trouble getting it on, just be careful if you're going to put a pair of pliers here on the end. Just be gentle with it so that you don't scar the, the brass. You don't want to do that. And you want to get this down beneath where it breaks here or where it, it tops or bottoms out, I should say, right here. There's a a shelf right here that the, the handle doesn't go past okay and you want to make sure that you get the, the wheel all the way down beneath that all right so then that way the handle can go all the way down nice and flush okay so we've got a set screw here it goes back on And then we've got a little, put the handle nut on first. And you don't need to torque this down, really. You can do it gently, but don't overdo it.
is the tiniest screw. These little screws here go on the handles usually. They're just really, really small. Okay. So first thing we'll do is we'll check our free spool here. Make sure that the free spool is working all right. Looks like it's working pretty good. Getting these bearings tightened up just right is key for good casting with these style reels here. Okay. We'll see how our drag is holding up. That's pretty nice and smooth, actually, I'd say. Considering the age of the reel, it's pretty good. So, loosen that up. So there you have it. That is the Ted Williams Model 560, uh, made by Daiwa, and made for Sears, uh, casting reel, all serviced and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please do subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button, and we'll see you next time.